I would like to ask a question as it relates to your ability to think outside the box. Clearly, you're very good at this throughout your career, but with the structured questions and concrete answers that higher education provides, it can be difficult adjusting once in industry as the questions are much more broad or open-ended and the answers are almost never clear. How have you been able to train your brain to go against the grain, AKA what are the tools you use to solve complex problems? Sure. So, so I think you're exactly right. Uh, in college, yeah, freshman chemistry class, you're asked, you know, what's the hydrogen ion concentration of orange juice with a pH of 2.8? And you go look up the formula and you get the answer, right? It's whereas now you get into industry and it's like, why are the last, why am I rejecting the last two reels for low sizing? Or why have I used 40% more size, you know, AKD size in order to hit, you know, make on spec paper for the last 12 hours? It's those kind of questions. And there is no book to say, here's the answer, right? And so, but that's actually what I love about wet end chemistry and about the job that I get to do, um, where you really get to dive into that kind of fishbone diagram of all the possible root causes and, and try to break it down to, to things you can measure. And it's very much like being a detective, right? It's like, I've lost the size, why? Or, or sizing demand is up. Okay, so you can check the AKD, you know, the feed skid, make sure the chemical's going in, right? Make sure there's dilution water. You can go check the quality test, make sure the test is correct. Uh, but then you can also look at what are the things that impact? So get down to the fundamentals of how it works, okay? Sizing is going to go on the high surface area stuff. So I'm going to go look at retention. Oh, okay, I've lost fines retention. Well, what could cause you to lose fines retention? Well, charge. Okay, well, the charge is now much more anionic, which is causing things to repel and lose the charge. Why? And so you keep going through these whys with questions that you can answer, right? They're verifiable questions. And you get down to, okay, the charge is more negative and I'm actually not feeding coagulant, perhaps, or there's some issue with the coagulant feed, which, and you can translate, right? That it, it gets all the way through. It's less coagulant feed causes the system to be more anionic. So I've lost fines retention. So the same AKD in the same system is now not providing the same level of sizing. So I need more in order to make on spec paper. So you're right, those are much broader problems but those are great problems to solve. And they're, and they're really rewarding when you can get in there and fix it and help the mill you know, get back to kind of centerline conditions. Um, as far as tools, yeah, I mentioned that fishbone. I, there are some statistical tools you can use. You, know, you can pull pie tags down and look at QSUM plots, look for inflection points. You know, what changed 12 hours ago? And all of a sudden you see my um, coagulant flow drop and you say, aha, you know, and then you can be that detective. So I like using, you know, we, we have an Envoy add-in that we have to help analyze PI data uh, or, you know, we have the digital solutions tool, this optics tool, which really gets at root cause analysis for some of these problems. But even those digital solutions can point you to go look at something but you still have to understand the process, right? You still have to be enough of a chemical engineer to understand the wet end of the paper machine system, know how things work and, and really breaking it down to those fundamentals. Uh, but I, I really enjoy solving problems. And that's the beauty of this job, right? If you're passionate about it, you enjoy it, this isn't work. And, and when I get to work on a problem like that and, and get the opportunity to solve it, that's pretty rewarding. Yeah, I think that well, you you mentioned, you know, understanding the process as much as you understand the computer software part of it. That is something that, you know, people struggle with at the start, you know, trying to balance those two interactions. But also, as a young professional with all this information and these massive problems given to you that are fairly complex, what you mentioned, choose things that you can measure to analyze. Don't just say, well, theoretically, what if that happened and this happened? If you can't measure it, there's no way to prove it. 
So with these massively complex problems, choosing something that you can measure, if you're in a group of individuals steering the conversation that way, I think it's you know your responsibility to make sure that that occurs. Otherwise, you're just going to be chasing your tail and throwing theories out there that you can't prove.